Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the basics of the biological system. And in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the cellular structures. So initially we discussed about the prokaryotic structures followed by the eukaryotic structures. And when we were discussing about the eukaryotic structures, we have also discussed about the uh, different types of organelles what are present in the eukaryotic cells and how you can be able to separate them with the help of different different types of fractionation techniques so we have discussed about the density gradient identification and as well as the uh, differential identifications and uh, in the previous uh, lectures we have also discussed about the cellular metabolism so we have discussed about the anabolic reactions and we also discussed about the catabolic reactions so within the catabolic reaction, we discuss about the carbohydrate metabolisms and the lipid metabolisms. Whereas within the anabolic reactions, we discuss about the synthesis of the different types of amino acids and so on. So in today's lecture, what we are going to do is we are going to discuss about the how the cell is utilizing this energy for different types of activities. And one of such different uh, activity which is very crucial for the cell is the cell division and the cell cycle. So uh, when we talk about the energy, right, the energy what is present in the biological system is going to be utilized for many types of applications, right. This energy is uh, going to be utilized for the uh, synthesis of the anabolic reaction, right. And the end product of the anabolic reaction is the synthesis of biosynthesis of products, biological molecules and uh, such as uh, protein and nucleic acid. Most of these things are required, uh, are required for the other kinds of uh, activities. Now energy is also being utilized for the growth of the organisms. So when you take an, in, in, when you take a nutrition, you are going to produce the energy and that energy is going to be utilized for anabolic reactions, running the anabolic reactions so that you can be able to synthesize the different types of bio molecules and that energy is also going to be used for the growth of the organisms. And when you are doing the biosynthesis of the different types of biological molecules, that also is going to be utilized for the growth of the organisms. Because when you are going to increase the number of cells or when you are actually going to enlarge the growth of the cell, you require the synthesis of the plasma membrane, you are going to require the synthesis of the nuclear content and then you also require the synthesis of the different types of molecules. So when we talk about the prokaryotic cell, uh, in the prokaryotic cell, uh, let's take an example of the bacteria for example. So if you take a bacteria, what happened is that the bacteria is uh, having the chromosome, right? or the nuclear content, right? So what happened is that when it is actually require uh, acquiring the nutrition from outside, so if it is taking the uh, nutrition, right? It is uh, taking up the nutrition and then enlarging into the size. So it is synthesizing the lipid molecule, it is synthesizing the protein molecules, it is synthesizing the um, nucleic acids and all that. And as a result, what is happen is that it is actually going to increase the size, right? It is actually going to increase the cell size. Uh, size of the cell and uh, the nuclear DNA also, right? When it goes to beyond a certain limit, okay, then what happens is that it is actually going to make another copy of the DNA. And as a result, what will happen is that it is going to have the two copy of the DNA, right? And once it has the two copy of the DNA, it is actually going to be divided from the center, right? And that's how it is actually going to have the two different bacteria, right, and uh, with uh, its own nuclear DNA, its own chromosome, right, and uh, that's how the bacteria is going to grow from one bacteria to another bacteria, and this kind of division is called as binary division, 
right and binary division could be uh, equal division or it could be unequal division so apart from the binary you can also have that other kinds of uh, uh, divisions such as fragmentations and other things of that right but binary division is the most popular division what is happening into the prokaryotic system now here when you are doing the binary division you are simply cutting the uh, bacteria from the middle and so that the both the cells will have the some amount of cytosol and some amount of the nuclear content and ultimately these two are also going to take up the nutrition and then they also will grow right but uh, since they don't have the organelles, they don't have the membrane bound organelles, it is easy because you don't have to distribute the organelles also. For example, if it is a eukaryotic cell, you also have to ensure that when you are going to do the cell division or when you are going to divide the cell and produce the two cells, uh, you should have the equal distribution or nearly equal distribution of the mitochondria. You also should have the distribution of the endoplasmic reticulum. You should also have the distribution of the Golgi bodies and so on so that the both the cells should be uh, sufficient enough or independent in terms of the uh, you know running its metabolisms and that is very difficult and that require a precise mechanism so that you can be able to uh, you know the do the cell division and that's why the cell division in the eukaryotic cell is well planned and well organized in such a way that you are actually going to have a sequence of events so that you can be able to perform the cell division. And these sequence of events are called cell cycle. So, so uh, every eukaryotic cell is actually going to go through with these cell cycle stages and then only it actually can be able to, uh, you know, increase its number. So it can actually be able to divide and give you the more numbers. So the cell cycle, when you talk about the cell cycle, the cell cycle has the precise uh, different phases. You have the interphase, you have the G1, S, G2 and M phases. So the eukaryotic cell undergoes the precise cell cycle and division to produce the two daughter cells. Cell cycle is a series of tightly regulated events leading to the division and duplication. It is a vital process used to single cell called fertilized egg is developed into the full organisms. Several division is a crucial event underlining the regeneration and repair in the tissue, liver and heart. In prokaryotic cell, the parent cell is divided simply by the division into two halves through the process of binary fusion. Whereas in the case of eukaryotic cell, the cell cycle has three important phases: the interphase, the uh, mitotic phase, and the cytokinesis. So in the interphase, you are going to have the synthesis of the genomic content and the cytoplasm. Whereas you can in the mitotic phase, you are going to have the division of DNA into the two halves and the cytokinesis, it is actually going to have the division of the cell. This means in a, uh, in a cell cycle, you are going to have the interface. So this interface is actually going to prepare the cell for the cell division. And you can also have the S phase where you are actually going to have the synthesis of the DNA and the G1 and G2 phase are actually the uh, and then you also going to have the mitotic phase, which is actually going to divide the DNA into the daughter cells. And then it also going to uh, followed by the cytokinesis, which is actually going to divide the cell into the two cells, right? So let's start discussing about these different phases. So first is the interface. So interface is preparatory phase required to perform the requisite steps. These are the series of events in the nucleus and as well as in the cytoplasm cytosol of the daughter cell to enable it to enter into the division phase. Uh, division phase, this phase has uh, several phases. There are as follows. So within the interface, you are going to have the G1 phase. So it is also known as the growth phase. It, it starts from the end of the mitosis and until the beginning of the S phase. So this is the uh, G1 phase. It starts from the mitotic and it goes up to the end of the beginning of the S phase. During this phase, the cellular proteins enzymes are synthesized. So during this phase, you are actually going to have the synthesis of the different types of biological machinery, right? You require the DNA polymerase, you require the uh, 
uh, so actin protein, you require the plasma membrane, all those kind of things are actually going to be synthesized within the G phase. So G1 phase is actually going, there will be a synthesis of cytosol so that uh, it is actually going to help for the cell to the, uh, you know, enter into the S phase. Most of these enzymes are required for DNA synthesis in the S phase. Duration of the G1 phase depends on the cell type within the organism. G1 phase is under the control of the P53 gene products, right? So, you know, the P53 is a transcription factor which actually regulates the cell cycle and the cell division. Uh, so, the G1 phase is under the control of uh, uh, P53. And G1 phase, the length of the G1 phase depends on the availability of the different raw material what is required for the synthesis of the enzyme. Uh, it also be uh, regulated or it is also being linked to the genetics of that particular cell. So if the cell is a uh, very slow growing cell, then the G1 phase probably could be very large because it requires a, a large quantity of the enzymes and other kind of things. Whereas the fast growing cells, uh, the G1 phase could be short because it has to divide very rapidly and in that case, the G1 and G2 phase could be very, very small because it actually is full of nutrition. So it actually can prepare the G1 and G2 phase very uh, quickly. Then we enter into the S phase. So the S phase uh, is the once cells grow and all factor nucleotide is available. It, it starts the DNA synthesis during the S phase. At the end of this, all chromosome present in the nucleus is replicated and the DNA content get doubled. No change in ploidy. The synthesis of DNA occurs very fast to avoid the exposure of newly synthesized DNA to the mutation. So in the S phase, you are actually going to have the DNA synthesis, okay? DNA synthesis from the pre-existing copy, right? This means if you have the parent DNA, right? If you have a parent DNA, it, that parent DNA will enter and will give you the two DNA strands, right? Uh, one is parent DNA, right? One is the original DNA or the parent DNA and the other one is going to be the daughter DNA, right? And you know that the DNA is, uh, DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. So the parent DNA is also going to have the new copy and the daughter DNA is also going to be the new copy. This means both of these DNA strands are going to be identical in nature, which means the different DNA, will, it will be going to have one strand from the parent DNA and the other strand from the, uh, from the newly synthesized DNA. Whereas in the daughter cell also, you're going to have the one strand from the parent DNA and the other strand is going to be from the uh, newly synthesized DNA. And that's how the DNA synthesis is going to occur during the S phase. And at the end of the S phase, the amount of DNA is going to be the 2x. It's not going to be in change the ploidy of the cell. It's actually just increasing the DNA content of that particular cell. So earlier, when it was in the G1 phase, it's actually going to have the X amount of DNA. Whereas in the S phase, at the end of the S phase, it is actually going to have the 2X amount of DNA. Then it enters into the G2 phase. So G2 phase is also the preparatory phase, the growth phase between the DNA synthesis and the mitosis. During this phase, the cells grow and synthesize the protein and cellular machinery required for the mitosis and the cytokinesis. This means it is actually going to produce large uh, different types of the cyclin proteins and other kinds of uh, protein which is spindle proteins, uh, tubulins and all those kind of things so that they will help into the mitosis and as well as during the cytokinesis. Apart from these two phase, these three phases, we also have a phase which is called as G0 phase. So G0 is actually a non-dividing phase, okay? So it is a non-dividing phase, okay? Uh, so after the G1 phase, the Qcent, Qcent means the cell which are non-dividing cells. Senescent, which means the cell which are very sick or they don't want to divide. And non-proliferating multicellular eukaryotic cell enters into the G0 phase because they don't want to divide. For example, the neural cells, right? And so the cells of the brain, the first cells of the spinal cord, the cells of the neural system, 
they don't divide because they they are terminally being programmed like that so they will in, they will be always remain into the g0 phase and they will never enter into the any of these cell cycle stages so cells remain in this phase for long period of or the indefinite period as in the case of the neuron cells it is also common in fully differentiated cells the fast growing cells never enter into the g0 phase and hence it is not a regular cell cycle phase and the cells are undergoing into the specific conditions they will undergo into the g0 phase for example the rbc rbc is under the g0 phase because it doesn't decide okay because rbc does not have the nucleus so it it has actually a specific case where a particular type of cell does not have a nucleus and that's why it cannot you know the divide so it will actually into the g0 phase apart from that the neural cells are also non dividing cells so they still have the nucleus but since they don't get any kind of stimulus uh from the uh, from the external so that it, they can actually be able to decide or uh, to divide actually so after the g2 phase you are actually going to have the mitotic phase and then you also going to have the cytokinesis so mitotic phase uh, whether it is so mitotic phase can be divided into two different types of mito, uh, phases I, it can be mitosis or the meiosis so mitosis or the m phase after the g2 phase the cell enters into the mitosis or the m phase to divide the dna equally between the two daughter cells each mitosis has the four distinct stage to precisely divide the dna content of the cell so the purpose of the mitotic phase is that it wants to divide the dna uh, precisely between the two daughter cells so it actually can divide in such a way that it the both of the both of these cells are actually going to get the equal amount of dna right so the mitotic phase is also being divided into the four different phases first phase is called prophase so during this phase the nuclear membrane is dissolved and the chromatin condense into the chromosome the nucleus nucleolus in the nucleus disappear in the beginning each cell has two centromere well, each cell has one centromere which replicates along with the dna to give rise a pair of centrosome to coordinate downstream events each centrosome has microtubule to form the spindle and assist in the distribution of the nuclear content during the mitosis centrioles are considered to organize the microtubule assembly but they are not essential so this is what you are going to see here is the different types of phases within the uh, during the mitosis so you what you see here is the mitosis this is the prophase then metaphase then anaphase and telophase so during the telophase the both the chromosomes uh, both the uh, dna strands are going to be separated and that's how it is then you are going to have the cytokinesis so then it is actually going to divide and give you and what you see here is the uh, the uh, you know the different types of uh, cells and uh, this is a typical uh, pattern what you are going to see because some of the cells are under the m phase some cells are under the pro phase beta phase ana phase and all that so this anyway we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to talk about the experimental top setup uh, so after the pro phase you are going to have the meta phase so in the meta phase so once you have you know uh, loosened the nucleus uh, so during the pro phase what you have done is your first thing what you have done is you have removed the nu nuclear membrane so that the dna what is been synthesized and the two copies of the dna what is present inside the nucleus is now free for distribution right and then uh, you are actually going to you know uh, pick up the dna right so you are going to divide the chromosome into the two parts so in this phase the two centromere start pulling the chromosome using the attached centromere towards the end of the cell which means what happen is that you are actually first going to dissolve the nuclear membrane so that the genetic content what is present inside this is actually going to be freely be accessible by the cellular machinery so what happen this is what you are going to happen during the pro phase in the meta phase what will happen is that the chromosome is actually going to be attached 
and it starts pulling the chromosomes right so you have two copies of the chromosome of the same chromosome and it is going to be start pulling onto the end of the cell right so imagine that you have this as a cell right so one end will enter into this side the other dna will enter into this side and that will happen with not with the one chromosome but it will happen with all the chromosomes right all the chromosomes will be going to pulled into the uh, two poles of the uh, of the cell so as a result what will happen is that the chromosomes are aligned along the metaphase plate or the equatorial plane since the pulling power of both the centrosome is almost equal it eventually arrange the chromosome on the metaphase plate so this is what going to happen it is actually going to arrange all the things onto the metaphase plate the alignment of the chromosome along with the metaphase plate is crucial event to decide the entry of cell into the another phase which is called as the anaphase the signal required for this control is created by the mitotis spindle checkpoints and all these checkpoints are being controlled by the uh, cycle independent uh, cell cycle proteins then we have the anaphase so the protein attached to each chromatids are cleaved and the sister chromatids are separated as the daughter chromosome the chromosome linked on the metaphase plates are pulled by the microtubule and moved towards their respective centrosome centrosome although the exact mechanism of generating the force required for the centrosome movement is unknown but it is suggested that the reactive rapid assembly and breakdown of microtubule may provide the force for this movement at the end of this phase the chromosomes are being prepared for the distribution between the two different types of cells and then we have the telophase so in the telophase in this phase the daughter chromosomes move and attach to the opposite end of the cell right so this is what this is the telophase the nuclear membrane forms around each set of the separated chromosome daughter chromosomes and the nucleolus reappears in this event the several processes during the prophase are reversed to give the two daughter nuclei so this is what going to happen after this you are going to have the cytokinesis cytokinesis means the division of the cellular content at the end of the telophase the mitosis is over but the cell division requires the distribution of the cellular content equally between the daughter cell in the animal cell a cleavage furrow is formed between the uh, along the metaphase plate and divide the individual nuclei at the separate cell during this process it is ensured that the besides nuclei all other cellular organelles should be distributed equally between the daughter cell whereas in the plant cell the plate is cell plate is formed and divide the cellular content between the daughter cells so cytokinesis is a very very important step or very very important uh, events which actually going to divide the ce cellular content such as mitochondria uh, endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies centrosomes uh, peroxisomes and all those kind of things so that both of the components are actually going to be uh, you know equally uh, competent or equally independent so that they can be able to run their own metabolisms now so these are the four different stages what are present into the cell cycle you have the we started with the g1 then the cell are actually going to prepare for the cell division a uh, cell, cell is going to be prepared for the dna synthesis during the uh, g1 phase so there will be a synthesis of dna polymerase nucleotide and all that kind of once that is ready the cell will enter into the s phase and in the within the s phase it is actually going to do the replication and uh, once the cell has the replication the it is actually going to receive the x amount of dna from the g1 phase and that is actually going to be get converted into 2x amount of dna uh, during the s phase that 2x will enter and go to the g2 phase and uh, then it will enter into the mitosis so during the g2 phase it is actually going to synthesize the machinery what is required for uh, performing the m phase right or mitosis and in the mitosis then it is actually going to divide the uh, the nucleus uh, and it is actually going to distribute between the mother cell and as well as the daughter cell this means 
the amount the DNA content is again going to be 1x at the end of the mitosis and then there will be a cytokinesis so that it's actually going to produce the daughter cell and it is also going to have the mother cell which will enter into the um, cell cycle. So if I want to study this particular type of phenomena during the using the some of the analytical tools, what we require is we require a machinery so that it can be able to differentiate the uh, cellular content. So you, you know that the, from this to this, the cell will actually grow, right? So it's actually going to change the size also. So, and it's also going to change the DNA content. So we require a machinery so which can actually be able to uh, monitor the size and it also can monitor the DNA content of the cell. And that's how you can uh, be able to, uh, you know, identify the different types of cells what are present in the G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase and M phase. And within the M phase also, you can actually be able to decide which, which cells are under the prophase, metaphase, anaphase or telophase. So one of the classical uh, uh, technique what you can actually be able to do for studying the size and the DNA content is called as the flow cytometry. Okay, And the flow cytometry is a very, very robust tool to study the different types of cellular properties. So before getting into the detail of how you can be able to study the cell cycle using the flow cytometry and how you can be, what are the different types of protocol, what you have to follow. Uh, I would like to show you some of the basics of the flow cytometry. So flow cytometry is a, is, a, is a very robust tool which actually studies the different types of activities. So it actually can measure the density, size, it can also be able to tell you the receptor what are present in the cell surface and it also can be able to uh, you know, um, differentiate the cell based on the metabolic reaction. How it actually happens? It happens because it has a cell analyzer and cell analyzer is actually streamlining all the cells into a small chamber. And once the cell will in, in, uh, exit out of this chamber, it is actually going to be illuminated by a laser. So once it is going to be illuminated by the laser based on the size or based on the all these properties like the cell surface receptors or the metabolic reaction, it is actually going to give to the signal to the different types of detectors. So it can actually give you the size uh, to the detector for measuring the size. It can actually give the signal to the detector for measuring the density or it actually can give the uh, signal to the different types of fluorescence signal right and accordingly they, you can be able to know which cell has the uh, B cell receptors or which cell has a T cell receptor and so on right and based on these kind of informations you can actually ask the machine and it can actually be able to collect these cells which are would be having the desirable features. Uh, so to do this job we have a very detailed uh, you know the instrumentation part where you are actually going to have the, um, you know, the different types of components and the cells are actually going to flow into a chamber or into a flow, right? And once they reaches into the end, uh, end, it is actually going to be illuminated by a laser. And once it is going to illuminate by the laser, the cell is actually going to reflect the signal and it is actually going to be captured by the different types of the photomultipliers and these photomultipliers can give you the signal for the different types of uh, different types of uh, properties so it can be give you the uh, information about the size density and all other kinds of things uh, so it actually has the three main components you can have the flow system which is called fluidics you can hold have the optical system and you can also have the electronic system which means whatever the signal you are going to get it is actually going to process the signal and it will give you the readable signal so well, not, as far as the flow system is concerned it's going to have the flow cell and that flow cell is going to have the central core which is a sample is going to inject it and then also going to have the outer sheet membrane and it's going to have the and because of the hydrodynamic focusing it is actually going to focus the cell in such a way that they will be actually going to travel in a single stream and that's how the single cell is actually going to be illuminated 
by the lasers present at the end of the this tube okay uh, as far as the optical system is concerned uh, the light source used in the flow cytometer could be either the laser uh, beam or it can also have the arc beam you can also have the organ lasers which are actually going to give you the 488 nanometer wavelength although uh, modern um, flow cytometers can actually be able to have the different types of lasers can have the 488 lasers can have 280 lasers and all that so the, this is actually making the things more and more robust so that you can be able to collect uh, more information about the cell then we also have the different types of detectors so you can have the detectors for the forward scattering you can also have the detectors for the cell size refractive index and so on then you also have the uh, detectors for the side scatters and then you also have the intensity uh, of and whatever the intensity you are going to get this is going to be the in, uh, signal for the cytosolic content of the structure so and then you also have the electronic system so electronic setup is going to be convert the uh, information or the photons to the photoelectrons and these measure the uh, amplitude area and the width of the photoelectron pulse and it amplifies the pulse either linearly or the logarithmically and then digitize the amplified pulse then we also have the different types of plots what you are going to show into the flow cytometry you can have the single color histogram you can have the two color dot plot you can have two color contour plot or you can also have the density plot and uh, in the data acquisition when you are actually going to prepare a sample for the flow cytometry what you are going to do is you are first going to do a uh, you know trial run or test run actually right and uh, using the test run you can be able to set up the voltage you can be able to set up the gain in such a way that it should actually you know the your untreated sample should be in the center of the graph okay and so that you can be able to monitor the movement in the left or the right directions right uh, apart from that you can also do the gating right and getting is actually uh, nothing but the selection of a subset okay selection of a subset so selection of only a certain population of cell for analysis on a plot right and it allows the ability to look at the parameter specific to only to the subset which means suppose i am i am doing the uh, you know the whole blood right i am doing a whole blood analysis right and i have collected this as like fl1 versus or suppose uh, side scatter versus uh, uh, fsc right so i'm going to get this right and i am not interested in all these i am only interested in macrophage so if i go with this particular type of gate it is only going to give you the information about the macrophages or lymphocytes or leukocytes so all these uh, different types of cell type can be collected and then you only get the information about that although you are doing the complete crude sample you are doing the blood analysis but it only going to give you the information about the macrophage or the lymphocytes and you can actually have the different types of gates you can have the rectangular gate you can have elliptical gate you can have polygonal quadrant histogram and so on so uh, to explain you these things in more in detail with the you know with an instrument um, we have prepared a small demo clip where the student are actually going to explain you all these steps in uh, more in detail hello everyone in this video we will be discussing about flow cytometry its equipment and the software related to it flow cytometry is a basic technique in which the chemical or physical characteristics of a cell or a population of cells are determined by the instrument in this process um, the cells are suspended in a fluid mostly saline 0.9% saline and is passed through a beam of light and then and then the physical and chemical properties are recorded coming to the equipment this is a standard flow cytometer equipment manufactured by bd biosensors bd fax caliber so basically there are three parts in this machine the fluidic chamber the sample injection port and the fluidic panel in the sam in the fluidic drawer there are basically two tanks this tank is used is known as the sheath fluid tank and this is a wastage reservoir in this one we have to pour 
0.9% saline which is used as the sheath fluid and this is this is which is which passes to the sample and then on to the detector coming to the sample in injection port in sample injection port only certain types of tubes are known are used which are known as the fax tubes in this sample injection port we have to change the sample like this coming to the fluidic panel as you can see there are six buttons the low medium high run standby and prime we have to always remember that whenever we are changing the sample the machine should always be on standby and when we are acquiring the data it should be on run the low medium and high buttons uh, in, uh, represent the uh, the speed or the the speed which with the machine sucks the sample for low the machine sucks the sample at 12 microliter per minute for medium at around 35 microliter per minute and for high around 60 microliter per minute this prime button is used when for example if the if the sample if the sample injection port is is stuck with air bubbles or is stuck with like like samples like which are having doublets or debris so uh, in order to analyze the data of the facts uh, we use the software known as the cell quest pro we can find its icon in the toolbar in the as shown in the window after we open the cell quest pro software the first thing we need to do is acquire and then connect it to cytometer after connecting it to cytometer two windows pops up the acquisition control and the browser entitled in the browser entitled we can save the data as well as the data file this acquisition control is used to acquire the data and uh, Uh, set the setup button uh, when the setup button is on blue we can try and error the data in this main panel and when we remove it from the setup and acquire the data only then the data will be saved one more thing we have to remember is after connecting to the cytometer we should make sure that in the instrument the tank is pressurized and it should not be depressurized so when the tank is pressurized only then the sheet fluid will flow through the instrument then coming to the things required for acquiring the data we need a parameter a description we need counters we need detector and amps we need status so coming to the detector and amps as we can see that uh, there are multiple detectors like fsc ssc fl1 fl2 fl3 and fl4 the fsc and the ssc are related to the forward scattering and the side scattering the forward scattering tells us about the cell size like how how large the cell is and the side scatter tells us the tells us the uh, complexity or the granularity uh, of the cell the fl1 channel uh, the fl1 channel is for the green fluorescence fl2 is for uh, uh, red fluorescence fl3 is for red or orange and fl4 is for uh, red fluorescence and uh, uh, as we can see in the voltage we can see that there are uh, five voltage gates like e00 e01 02 and e-1 for cancer cells uh, for cancer cells we mostly use e minus 1 because the cell size is large and uh, as the cell size decreases the e0 uh, like the e0102 increases for example the e0102 03 these are used for um, smaller cell size smaller smaller cells such as uh, rbcs or microbes or macrophages Uh, we can control the we can control the voltage using this toolbar uh, uh, i'll show you how to do that when we acquire the data so uh, and in the status panel we can see that the status is showing standby which is which means that we are not yet acquiring the data and the system is on standby and in the counters we can see uh, that the total events per in zero is second total events is zero and the events per second is zero because uh, when we start it will change and the coming to the plots the most basic plot in facts is the dot plot uh, no data is valid without the uh, dot plot so as soon as we uh, uh, 
dot the analysis dot plot the window the inspector dot plot window pops up in this we have to click at the corner of the uh, analysis dot plot and then in the plot type we have to do uh, acquisition and analysis and then uh, we can change the x parameter of the or the y parameter using these one of these options so uh, for this demo i am just showing you uh, we are just showing how to how to acquire the data using a cancer cell line so uh, now uh, i will show how to acquire the data before acquiring the data we should make sure that uh, how many number of events we want to uh, we want to record before stopping so uh, the default is set to 10000 so we will reduce it to 5000 just in case just to see the data how it is going and then click okay and after that uh, on the fluidix panel we have to press run in order for the uh, machine to to suck the sample from the fax tube as soon as we press the run button we should press acquire then only we can see the data as you can see that we can see that uh, there are multiple uh, cells being shown here in the near the 00 and uh, and they are showing away from the axis as well so we can change the direction of the flow using this according to our requirement in order to set the population so let's say that i want to stop the data after 5000 events so before that we need to save the data let's say that we are going to save the data in this in this file and then the data file can be written as then click okay and if we remove from the setup then we can actually save the data as we can see here the total events are being recorded like till now 500 600 events are recorded and the events per second are 75 um the as we have seen on the fluidix panel that there are three buttons the low medium and high this actually decide how many events are being recorded per second for example if we press the low then uh, then the events per second will be recorded low because we are actually taking low amount of sample from the fax tube and if you press high the number will increase it also depends on the concentration of the sample so mostly if the concentration is high we should opt the low uh, low button in the fluidix panel so that the so that the complete uh, number of events will uh, so that the instrument can record complete number of events in a right right manner now as we can see that as we have set the total events to 5000 after 5000 the data looks like this so uh, the, uh, the machine stops recording the data after uh, 5000 events because we have set to that so after that if you want like this for let's say that if this was the untreated and uh, we have uh, acquired the data of the untreated at a particular voltage and amp gain in order to acquire the data of the treated samples we should not change these parameters or else we will not know what is actually difference between the untreated and the treated samples so after this uh, let's say that we have completed the experiment so after this we need to watch the system so that uh, the next person or when we use the next time it will be easy for us to operate so for that we have to clean the system with a 2% sodium hypochlorite solution and we have to remove from the setup so that it does not save the data
now I have changed the sample from the sample to the 2% sodium hypochlorite. As we can see that some of the cells will still be there in the sample injection port and that needs to be cleared. So for that purpose uh, we are washing the system with 2% sodium hypochlorite at high uh, pressure. We have to keep washing the uh, system till the events per second uh, remain 14 or 15 uh, for a longer time. So while handling the fax instrument there are some precautions to be taken. For example when we change the uh, sample in the sample injection port we should always make sure that the system is on the standby mode and also when we are done analyzing the data the system should always be in the stand standby mode and after using the instrument we should always depressurize the sheath fluid tank because if it is not depressurized it may actually harm the system now we are going to see how to process the raw data which we have just acquired in the fcs express data software uh, so far we have seen how to acquire the data in the fax equipment after we acquire the data in the fax equipment we have to process the data in the uh, uh, software known as the fcs uh, express 5 flow software so uh, to begin with uh, after we open the software we open the new layout after we open the new layout uh, a window appears in which uh, variable options are there such as home insert gating batch format text data multi-cycle view so in the home tab we can see uh, that we can take a new page according to our needs like blank title uh, according to our requirements and also we can check the layout we can also take the layout which is best suitable for our plots and uh, we can also uh, change the size of the plot uh, with respect to uh, our requirement and if you want to change the orientation we can use portrait or landscape and also uh, in the insert we can use uh, whichever data uh, whichever plot which we want to use for example histogram or multi-cycle dna or proliferation or dot density color contour scatter etc so the ba most basic uh, plot is the dot plot which is uh, essential to every fax uh, data so uh, after that uh, we can also do gating so gating is a mechanism in which we can segregate two different two or more different uh, populations from uh, from a given uh, population of cells for example uh, if you want to uh, segregate the debris from the singlet and the doublet cells we can use gating the gating can be of different types like ellipse uh, rectangle polygon free form and also uh, we can do the quadrant analysis for example in uh, acridine orange propidium iodide or annexin 5 propidium iodide staining for the live and dead cells we can use quadrant analysis in which the first quadrant uh, uh, shows the uh, live cells and so on and in the batch uh, in the format we can select uh, which format we, which we want to use uh, anyhow this all the options will be enabled once we load the data so uh, let's load the data and see how it looks so after we take the uh, file uh, after we input the file into the software a window appears in which we can use uh, different types of plots such as dot density color contour etc so uh, the dot uh, the density color dot uh, contour uh, these all uh, and the scatter plot these all are the same plots but uh, with uh, represent but in a different way of representation uh, so uh, let's see um, how does that look so uh, for example i have taken uh, untreated sample uh, obtained on a fl2a channel so fl2a channel is responsible for red fluorescence so we can see that uh, this is the multi-cycle DNA plot and this is the histogram plot as we have taken it on the FL2 channel so we will switch to FL2A and this is the scatter plot uh, this is the density the contour plot this is a color plot and this is a density plot and the final one is the color plot 
uh, so um, the uh, the this the first one is the FSC versus SSC. This is a dot plot. This is a basic dot plot which represents uh, how the data looks. For example, as the population of the cells goes away from the zero zero mark, we can say that the granularity as well as the size of the cells increase. So if we want to exclude that uh, from the data, we can use uh, we can exclude that using gating option. Also, as we can see that the second plot, which is the density plot, it is same. Uh, it is almost as same as the dot plot but uh, with respect to the, uh, the density for example the blue color in the middle represents a denser population and as it goes outward the population of the cells decrease also the same dot plot can be represented in a uh, counter plot as shown in the third plot and uh, the fourth plot is the histogram in which we can see and the difference uh, the variable uh, intensities for the different cell cycle phases and uh, the fifth plot is the uh, uh, DNA cell cycle plots in which we can see different phases of cell cycle like G1 as G2 uh, the scatter plot is just another representation of the dot plot uh, in which the the, num the events are just highlighted in a respectable way and also the last plot is a color plot actually in a color plot we can see two different populations uh, assigned with a different color but because we have used only one die so only one color is visible so uh, in this way we can check the different plots and also if you want to see the statistics uh, and also the details of the plot we have we just have to click right and then press the uh, format option and we can compensate the data we can cut copy paste uh, and in the format option we can actually uh, do a variable number of things like changing the border color uh, overlaying the data the dot options the size the background the axis we can do a whole lot of options which will be helpful which will be helpful for us in order to present the data in a more uh, appropriate manner so uh, this is all uh, with respect uh, to the fcs fi express software Hopefully, this was helpful for everyone. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to study or we are going to discuss some more aspects related to the biological system. Thank you. Mm -hmm.